So in this video, I want to show you how I built this crosscut sled. Uh, it's got a T-track across the top, so you can put a uh, stop here if you want to do repetitive cuts. It's got a couple T-tracks in the, the, the sled, so you can put uh, these clamps to hold down. Uh, it's got a zero clearance cut, you see right there, so where the blade goes through, and it also screws down. It's a half-inch plywood, so you can replace that if it ever gets uh, you know, cut up, run a dado through it, anything like that. Um, so here's the, the cross or the, the stop block. We can see that it attaches or, you know, whatever accessories you want to put along the, the top there. Uh, it's a lot safer than using just a regular miter uh, gauge. It's also way more accurate than the little miter gauge that comes with it. And this is for the uh, Sawstop Job Site Pro, but it'll work with uh, really any uh, table saw. You just put it in the tracks and, and uh, let it slide. So I wanted to cut out the base first, so I marked out uh, for the size of the sled. So it really depends on the uh, size of your uh, table saw. So I just used a track saw and cut it to the, the length. And then I got the, uh, the the width I wanted, so I laid out exactly, again, the size I wanted my sled. I wanted it pretty big so I could handle at least two foot pieces. And then I went to cut the front and the back. Uh, so these all became the same size. So I think they were like three inches or so. So I just set the table saw and just ripped it all to the same size. So I was using three quarter inch plywood and I'm going to glue it together so I can get a three inch thick. So front and back will be three inches. So enough because it kind of gets cut through. But again, you want it all supported just so that the uh, so you can keep a, a straight cut the whole time. I actually made a mistake here and I cut more of those pieces and you'll see the uh, the, the front piece actually has a little raised up area so that it has a little bit extra support and I forgot to do that but I'm doing it here. Uh, this is where I'm just cutting just up to the edge and then I finished it off with the, the jigsaw. So I cut the, the one side and cut the other. It's kind of hard to see there but you see there's a, a little raised area. So I'm just again getting as close as I can just so less I have to do with the, the track saw. I know I'm going to smooth this all out. So you can see here's the little bit closer one as it has a little bit higher edge there. And the one that's that I'm working on right now is the back side or whatever you want to say. Maybe the front, the closest to where you are. Uh, so I'm just going to glue all the panels together. Um, look like my glue I think was a little old here. It was all kind of chunky, but it was good enough. It ended up being good enough. It just needed to be uh, smoothed out. So I get the little roller and smooth it out here just as you would with any gluing. Just did one side. It's good enough uh, to glue these pieces together. So this side is going to be just square because it, it has the closest to me and it has the T-track with the uh, the stop on it. Uh, but the front, again, I wanted to add a little bit extra meat to it. So as the, because the saw has to go through it and the more you cut through, the more flex it has to it. So it just give a little bit extra flex and everybody does this. So assume they, everybody else knows what they're doing. So that's why I just kind of copied what they did. Um, and then I put them together in a clamp. So the two pieces are glue, or the piece, each of the individual pieces are gluing together, but the two are not going to glue to each other. But I just want to have to glue it up one time and not have to use so many clamps. So I kind of put it in here. I use my panel clamp on the back side there to kind of hold it straight as best I could with avoid any warping. And decided to put another of these panel clamps, which is like this four inch poplar that I did in a different video. Uh, but it's really straight and really uh, strong. So I can put it on there and make sure it, there's uh, no flex to it. I'm gluing up straight pieces. Then just put the panel clamps, some more pipe clamps. Uh, overkill here, but this is what I ended up looking like, uh, gluing it all together. And then I was a little bit lazy, didn't feel like cutting it off, so I just ran it over, took it over the planer, and just, I want to get a, a square edge, but I also want to take the glue off, so... As well as just running it through here, just to make sure this is the piece that's closest to you, and this is the piece that that you you want to be square. So, again, ran it through the planer, made it square, then took it to the table saw, used that squared up plane side to run a parallel cut to make sure it's square top and bottom, and just push it through and help get rid of the, the glue as well there. And then I moved on to the track, so I got this. Uh, it's a plastic kind of. Uh, material and uh, I'll put a description in the link or in, in the, a link in the description there for you so cut it just to this just the size 
of the, the tracks. And I'm going to put make two of them and I test it out, make sure it slid good. So that was just the right size, a little bit of tweaking. So I got two of them. And what I did was then put washers in here so that they sit on top. So what I'm going to do is put, put some double-sided tape on there and then just put the sled on top of that. And I want it to stick to it temporarily so I can put screws. So you want it just a little bit higher so that when you set it down, the glue or the uh, tape can hold on there. So again, I got it on there. You can see the gray double-sided tape. Put that in there in enough places so that when I lay it down, again, it's going to stick on there. And then I use the fence as a, to keep it as square as possible. So this is my sled. Keep it tight up against the square or square up against the, the, the fence. Lay it down till I can just, just touch it up and then push down on that double-sided tape to kind of hold those rails in place. Again, I don't want to have to do many much adjustments and try to keep it as square as possible here. So just pushing down. So it should be stuck, and then when I pick it up, it should be stuck to the other side, and I can flip it over and screw it down. And so I'm running, uh, countersinking the screws. Uh, you probably don't have to here, but I didn't want it to you know, scratch anything. So I'm going to run some some, some wide uh, drill here, drill bit, just to for the size of the screw head. And then we go back and pre-drill. Uh, and the one thing you want to make sure you do is do not tighten the screws down, because... This is plastic, so as you tighten them down, that plastic will actually spread out and, and then it would stick or bind up into the uh, the slot that you're trying to get it to freely slide in. So you just want to use a screw, and I'm, again, it's just showing I'm using that, that a regular real screwdriver here, not the impact driver, to drill it down and you know, spread out that uh, slide. So just put, I think I put like four in each side, so eight total, and then just enough so you can see now they're, it should be lined up the way that I had it because I put it in there. It's sliding pretty good. I actually ended up using some of this uh, table saw, tabletop uh, lubricant. It made it slide really well. So I went back to the, uh, the fences since they, they were dried now from the glue and just ran an eighth inch uh, round over bit on here just to make it a little bit smoother just because you're holding on to it. It's not necessary for anything, but it's just uh, good for holding on. Uh, so I ran it on the front or on this side and on the, on the back one as well. Uh, it was a little bit harder running around the angles, but not too bad. So, and then last, I just took this uh, soft pad on the sander. Uh, it's soft just so you can run over corners without flattening them out. Just add a little more round, just make sure everything was smooth, get rid of the burn marks, all of that. Just make it nice to hold on to since you'll be holding on to it. Uh, and so I, then I clamped it down because I wanted to then screw it to the sled. Uh, not showing it on here, but I ended up having to adjust it just a little bit. And I used a five cut method, which you can search and you can see how to do that. Um, so again, I, I, I screwed it down here. So you don't really only need to do one screw on each side and then make sure it's square using that five cut method. And then you kind of adjust it and then finish off all the screwing here. Uh, but also it helps to clamp it down just so it doesn't move at all. So since you're going to the drywall. And I think it just fixed it down with like two inch screws or something like that. It was enough to, that does not, not going to move and stay square to the, the fence or square to the blade, what would you want? Uh, so just testing it out, same thing front and back. And then here's where I'm actually doing that five cut method. So I've got that board. What I'm doing is running, th running through, I'm going to cut all four sides with my, with my sled as it is. And so you're exaggerating any imperfections because you're doing it four times. So each time you cut, you use that as a reference. So any, if it's off a little bit, it gets exaggerated each time so that when you go through, uh, so I'm doing the fourth cut, now I'm back to the original. What I'm going to do is slide over and make a, a little bit bigger cut so I can measure at the top and the bottom to see how far off it is. And there's a calculation. So using the micrometer here is 0.29 on this side, 0.35, so 0.06. So it's not too bad, but off a, a little bit. Uh, so... Make sure you, you mark the A, which is the closer to you, and the and the B, which is further from you. And then I'll have a link in the description, too, for I found this website that, that made it nice, just easy. So you can put in, again, that A distance or width, that B distance, how long your piece was, and then the, the width of your fence, because that, that'll tell you how to offset it, and whether it's the, the left or the right. And then it'll show you, again, I had 0 0.0259. So you actually can use, like, a spacer, like an automotive one for spark plugs. That's what I ended up using and fixing it, make it all square. And once I got it square, now I'm going to use this uh, half inch uh, plywood. And so, so I'm going to end up doing is building it up here so I can have the part that, uh, that, that, that you cut 
have a zero clearance and I'm going to have T tracks in between as you saw in the beginning of the video. So just had enough here just so I could move it over and then put the T track in there. Just, just try it out. Uh, so yeah, pre-drilled everything countersink because you don't want your wood or whatever you're cutting obviously running up against screw heads so just did a lot of that so i think i put like six screws in here or so just sank it down so that that would be solid so this one will always be in place um, i'm going to have that middle piece where the, the saw blade goes through that it can be replaced it they're all screwed down just in case they ever need to replace it or you know want to make any upgrades or anything so i got this piece in place and what I did was then take the T-track and put it up against there. And so that's going to hold down my clamp. And then this middle part is where I'm going to, you know, the, the blade's going to th go through. And this will be easy to replace. So if you're in a data through there or an angle or anything else, you can uh, always replace this. It'll be easy with half-inch drywall. Or sorry, half-inch plywood. If you don't want to do drywall here, that would be a big mess. So I just ran it through. Uh, screwed it down, then got my other T-track, screwed that down. And so you can see this, there's, I'll have a T-track on each side and it'll uh, give me hold down clamps I can put on both sides. So I'm, if I'm doing taper cuts or any kind of small cuts or anything that I need to hold on, uh, it's easy to do. So now that I got that one middle piece in place, I just ran it through the table saw, got a nice zero clearance there and I can use that cut as a reference. And again, if I, I can, it's screwed down on each side so that can be replaced at any time. And then I just want to finish it off so that it's level all the way across. Uh, those, and one thing you'll notice is the T-tracks are back about half an inch. That's so the screw can go in, in and out. And so when you're cutting, if you're cutting big pieces or so, or such, you can uh, always have a flat surface. You can take those out so in case they're in the way. So here I'm just again using that last, making that last piece. And it's kind of nice. I'm able to measure it, measure the distance, and then use the uh, sled to cut. Uh, my piece just like I need it and use it. it's kind of interesting using the sled to make the sled um, so I got it lined up here I think I had like a half inch block or something I put underneath just to keep it flat but just ran it through it just needed a little bit of a trim on here and it was obviously square because I was able to cut through and put it on to the end and it all stayed nice and square so I can push it over here and then just like the other pieces just pre-drill them add some countersink holes I think I put a lot more screws in this one. I put like nine screws in this one just to because it's a little bit larger piece. But again, just to put it, sink all the screws in there, make it nice and flat so that it's flush all the way across so that any material you're cutting has a nice flat. And I just took the sander and then ran across here just because the uh, countersink had a little burrs or anything like that. Just being a little bit picky here. Uh, just making it so it is nice and flat, all the screw heads. And then ran it across here so that anything you're putting on here lay flat. Maybe unnecessary. Uh, but then here's the, the T-track or the, I'm going to put these clamps into the T-track. And you'll see uh, since I'm able, since I left that gap there, able to push it in there. And so it's the same thing, be able to take it out. So these are, I think I got these from Rockler. So they're just put it really easy to, to put on and put off. And then you, you, when you want to take them off, you can just slide it off, just loosen them a little bit. So I put one on this side. So if I'm holding down on this side, um, again, if I'm tapering on this side or tapering on the other, you can put them on both sides. Or if you have a piece that's small and you want to roll, run it across both sides, however you want to do for safety. Or you can put more uh, than one on each side. I'm sure this was enough for what I did. If I can ever get this silly thing on here, just keep uh, fumbling with this screw. Yep, finally got it. All right, so this is what it looks like. Uh, almost done. I need to run the T-track across the top. So I, I'm going to run a, a rabbit and put that on there so I can have a stop block. Uh, but it's always nice to just kind of play around with it. And I got excited. And I was like, let me try it out. So here's maybe not exactly how to use it, but you can see I'm be able to hold a piece of wood and not, or and safely cut through it without having to hold it down to get my fingers closed. And then I wanted to put a block in the piece on the end just because the blade can come through a little bit. So just use glue to hold it in and then some CA glue with some activator. So the CA glue will, the super glue will instantly hold on and give it like a clamping force while the uh, regular wood glue holds on. So you can see the cut there uh, in the, the, the front side of the sled. And this block just kind of hopefully reminds you, don't put your fingers there because the blade can come through if, you, if you're cutting all the way through. 
And so now I had everything ready. Uh, this is where I'm going to wrap it out and put that T track in there. Just make sure I got the right setting. I really should have done this before I put that block because then it caused all kinds of problems. So I had to run the, you know, only up to that block or as close as I could, uh, run it across the other side. And I think I had to use a track saw and kind of cut it out and some chiseling and a lot of work. Uh, just adds a lot of hassle to it, but got it done. And then so here you can see yeah, once that's rabbited out, put that T track in there. And what that does is gives you a place to put this like a stop block. So I got this Cat's Moses stop block, which everybody uses, which is great. No deflection on it. You can move it around uh, front and back thickness. So you can see it slides along there. So if I'm if you're doing repetitive cuts, you can always have that there. And then here's a, a, a project where I was actually using it. So I, I needed to taper this leg. Uh, this is going to be a later uh, video. And so I lined it up right on that zero clearance. The blade goes through there. So I know exactly where the blade's always going to go. Line it up on there. I uh, use the clamps to hold it down. I had this idea where I'll, I'll, I would put the video on there so you can get like a POV. But unfortunately, it was like vibrating <laughs> a lot. But you can you should be able to see. So this is it's holding down the block. And I'm kind of holding it just because I'm a little bit paranoid. But the blocks are providing enough clamping force there to hold the hold it down as I run down that taper. Uh, or tapering of that leg so it worked out perfectly uh, it's great for big stock tapering everything else so it makes it a lot more a lot safer and upgrade from the regular miter 